Uh, my name is Tagrit Adam, and I work in the Alliance for Health Policy and Systems Research, which is based in WHO in Geneva. And just to start by saying thank you very much for this opportunity to share a few words about system thinking and its relevance to health systems. And I'd really like to start with um, building blocks of the health systems that have been usefully used by some uh, of you to are. try and conceptualize um, where to intervene in the system, where there are system problems, how can you address them. But probably we have used, uh, we have spent a lot of time to try and think of them in isolation. And what the point I'm trying to make is that it's really time to think more about the interactions and the relationships between them and how complex it is, how they affect each other, how they are governed by the actors of the health systems and how the people are really central to decisions and to actions in the system. And um, often we really conceptualize interventions from the supply side where even in conceptualizing them, we talk about with supply side people. We don't pay much attention to really try and seek the, the demand side people as well. So these, these are all important uh, points to try and understand why policies work or not work, especially that, uh, you know, in often many answers are very counterintuitive and surprising, unanticipated, and, it, and that's really key to, uh, to system thinking and complex, complex adaptive systems. So um, I would, I w I'm sure that many of us would ask, you know, when is this relevant? Is, it, is everything requiring a system thinking approach? And I find it useful to think of the distinction between how complex the intervention or the policy is and how, um, how much of a system-wide effect one expects from that policy and really putting them in a spectrum where the more complex the policy is and the more um, of system-wide effect you, you expect, the more it warrants a system thinking approach. Obviously, there is a spectrum of that, and most interventions, one would argue, have system-wide effects, but that's a useful way to think of when to use it, and also the scope of how complex one can go. Um, the other point I wanted to make is most of us have really been trained to think of problems as their individual components, and we think that by understanding the details, we can really address the problem and explain it and conclude into what sort of um, outcomes or, you know, depending on the questions we have. Me, one of them, you know, physicians, nurses, even epidemiologists. But what system thinking requires is really a different set of skills that uh, really respects or think about behavior as generated from the system, think of the interactions between the different components of the system. It really thinks of the system as... As a, as a cause to whatever happens as a response to a certain intervention. It th thinks of this as internally driven from the behavior of the system and its actor rather than think of it, of the system as an external factor that one needs to control for. So it doesn't think of it as, a, as a, for example, as an influencing factor. It thinks of it more as a causality. And, of course, the most important thing is to really go away from this very linear approach of input, output, outcome, process, uh, sorry, uh, impact, to more of a very dynamic um, process where there are feedback and the system is constantly changing and how can one use methods to be able to capture this complexity, this dynamic behavior and so on, which is really what we're trying to push for. I'd like to then maybe conclude by a few thoughts about how can this sort of thinking be used because very often one say, okay, this makes a lot of sense, but how can you really apply it to health system question? And I can think of at least four examples. One can use it to understand a problem, why the, a certain intervention is not working, why the system is, is weak or needing to be or behaving in that way, why is it why a particular policy is working in one place but not really in the other. So understanding a problem, it can also be used to design or redesign intervention in a more system-respecting way, taking all that complexity in, in mind. It can certainly improve evaluations of policies and, and uh, interventions by taking into account elements that capture complex adaptive system phenomena and try to understand it and explain it and then intervene or, or propose solutions for it. And finally, it can be used to explain or generate new theories about complex behavioral phenomena or complex um, 
reactions to policies or how the system behaves that one can learn from also to inform other interventions and designs. So uh, linked to the science of delivery, I think it's very uh, relevant in the sense that one would like to know why interventions are not why we are not able to scale up interventions to scale, or how can one deal with issues with implementations, for example, uh, reaching higher coverage when uh, coverage is still low and we don't understand why, because it worked in other places, even within the same country, but in different contexts. So system thinking in this case is very, very instrumental in trying to understand um, different behavior, um, pe resistance to change, uh, counterintuitive behavior, and, and so on. So there are several tools that I'm sure today will be presented in the following presentations that can deal with this. But it's certainly key to be able to do anything useful and, and a step forward, really, in trying to ensure delivery, effective delivery of interventions, because otherwise we'll just continue doing the same thing and not really uh, be able to, to implement things to scale and ensure that they will be sustainably continuing to be implemented because the system is so clever and just keep changing all the time.